welcome to the Living Unconventionally podcast. I'm Brittany Felix, and every Monday I'll be speaking with someone that realized a traditional life with a soul-sucking 9-to-5 job just wasn't for them. They had the courage to go against what society told them they should want, and now they chase their passions all over the world. We'll discuss their unconventional journey and their exciting and sometimes terrifying travels. Every Wednesday we'll continue that conversation by talking about just how they can afford to travel so often and live a life of freedom most people only ever dream of. Every Friday, I'll answer your questions and offer advice and encouragement to help you start living unconventionally. If you allow yourself to be inspired by my amazing guest, one day I may just be featuring you in your world travels. Today, I'm continuing my conversation with Janelle Alex. And in part one, you heard a little bit about her family's background and her entrepreneurial journey, but we are going to dive more into that today, including starting a business as a teenager that was successful and ran for 15 years before purchasing another business and then now transitioning into the online space so that she can have a location-independent lifestyle for her husband and her young son to be able to travel whenever they want, wherever they want. Janelle's got some great information considering that she has been an entrepreneur almost her entire life, and has experience with both brick-and-mortar businesses and online businesses. So I'm sure that you're going to find what she has to say very valuable, and I'm excited for her to provide some resources for you. So let's go ahead and jump right on in with Janelle. Well, Janelle, thank you so much for being back on the show. I'm so excited to talk about your professional evolution because you have done a lot of different things. Uh, You know, you've you've been an entrepreneur for a long, long time, so I think you're going to have a lot of valuable insights. Do you mind just giving us a little bit of a background on what that professional evolution has been like for you? Absolutely. And thank you for having me back, of course. (laughs) Well, when I graduated high school, oh my God, so freaking long ago, (laughs) that's a long time ago, I really wasn't quite sure, and I was not married to my current husband. Uh, I got married very young. I was 19. I got married. I don't advise that, but I did it. And I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do, and he didn't want me to go to college and blah, 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 and I allowed that to lead me (laughs) to not go. I don't want to blame him. It was my choice, but... So as I began to look at, well, what the heck am I going to do? I had a passion for psychology. I'd fallen in love with that in just my little semester long class in high school. But I had danced my entire life. And I had a mom say to me, and I had already been teaching. I started assistant teaching at 13. So I'd already been in that world as well. Yeah. So I don't know. By that point, of course, by 19, I was already teaching my own classes for somebody else. So when I had someone say to me, you know what, if you would open a dance studio, I'd sign my kids up with you. I'm like, huh. And I started thinking about it. Anyway, so long story short, bam, we built a studio. My parents invested the money, got the loan. I thankfully paid for every penny of it. They never had to pay for any of it, but they took a risk on me. And I'm super grateful for that. Mind you, that lady never signed her kids up. But anyway, <laughs> not even for one class, but it doesn't matter. I was very successful and, and I had a very successful studio for 15 years. But it did take a lot of hours and I was very, very busy. And I would easily, at the busiest point in that career, I would spend about 70 hours a week between teaching and doing all the back end work and managing employees mm-hmm. and so forth. It was a lot. And, and I went through a divorce and, and part of that. And then my son hit first grade and that's when he was in school all day. And that's when it really hit hard for me because not only now he was in school all day long and then sure he'd come to the studio and he did dance classes, but I didn't have that time with him. And it was, Mm -hmm. it was really, I'm like, wow, this is not cool. This isn't going to work. What am I going to do? So, and I'd already kind of hit that moment, mind you, before that, where I'd already had that moment before I had him where I said, oh my God, something's missing. I'm supposed to be doing something bigger with my life. What is it? And I had shoved that down. (laughs) I just Mm -hmm. pushed it down. So in the process of all that, I got divorced. I met my now husband and we got married and his son's the same grade level as my son. They're just a few months apart. So I still continued for the next, I don't know, 
I've lost, it's been so many years ago now, I'm trying to think, um, seven, whatever it was, years. I still taught, and then he and I bought his what had been his family's bowling center, and he began to put in a ridiculous amount of hours. So, you know, there were just those pieces. We loved working. We loved working with people. I sold my dance studio in 2005. So it's been a long time ago that it's been gone now. And I went back and got my college degrees. I still wanted my psychology degree. I went back, got that. Um, there's a long story behind that before I finally went through to get the master's and the PhD. But it was still a process of trying mm -hmm. to figure out, well, wait a minute, what is it I want to do with this? <laughs> so there was still <laughs> all of that and a huge, that's a huge, oh my gosh, right? That was a big school mm -hmm. loan. Oh my God. <laughs> Six figures worth of school, right? So there was all of those pieces, but we still knew that we didn't want to be tied down. And I know I talked about this in the first part of the ep or the show, but we we didn't want that just we had seen his my husband's parents just be tied down for years and what it did to them. And we didn't want that long term for us. So we knew we had to get out of it. And as I said in the other section, we unfortunately lost it all. Law of attraction can have a flaw of attraction if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um you know we we definitely didn't do it the way we wanted to. But so my husband took a job, and in the midst of that, I stepped over into the coaching industry. I'd always empowered women. It had come in the form of young girls mainly, but I'd always done that and always been there for their moms, for that matter. So I knew that empowering women was really important to me. So I just did. I just shifted gears, um, and with my degrees, Start And the spiritual piece came into play because my degree is in transpersonal psychology and spiritual psychology. So that was the direction I started to take and started to move online, which was a whole different thing. I had been easily, mm -hmm. fairly easily successful in my brick and mortar business. But doing it online was a whole different world. And it took a big learning curve to figure out, well, how in the hell am I supposed to connect with people and make them even <laughs> feel comfortable with me and like me, like the other people did. And so that was a, a very big thing that we, not just myself, but Rob had to learn too. And in the process of all that as well, before we even lost the bowling center, Rob had begun to write um, scenarios. They're called sexy challenges, but he began to write those for couples to just help them improve their relationship. And they're just little mini eBooks, if you will, and started getting those out there. So there was just a process and an evolution and as time went on, and because we've written so many books ourselves, we began to work with authors. And then my big focus is still empowering women. And so I merge it all together. But it, it was definitely a, a process. And you have to really look and say, wait a minute, all this stuff that I've done from, hey, I was PTO president, right? To whatever the case, I was on this board and that board and you name it, did a lot of stuff. So when you have all those experiences, you just have to pull them in and see how they relate to what it is that you could be or that you what you want to do. And then how can you make that work to help support you? Whatever your next step looks like for us, it's traveling right now for the next couple of years, at least, a consistent travel. So how can we do that without being face to face with people? Right, exactly. And so what is it exactly that you do now? Because I know you said your husband helps you with the business. So does he still write and you coach or what does that look like in your current business? Together, we're the co-founders of Authors Talk About It. And Authors Talk About It, one, we have a podcast, but two, we also run a big book award contest and we do marketing coaching for the, with uh, um, authors, excuse me, and work with them. So it's really about how the, getting the outside of the box mentality and finding mm -hmm. unique ways to get their message out. So that we love to do together. Myself, I'm a writing coach for women. You know, like I said, we've been talking about that. They feel that call to make a real difference in the world, but they probably just don't know where in the hell to start. It, mm -hmm. They're just like, what am I supposed to do? So I really do. We work through things. I help them create a doable plan that fits their lifestyle. So they can, they can create personal freedom and they can get their message heard. So right. that's where I'm at. And then, like I said earlier, um, I have a core piece that really connects to those women that their child, their, their oldest has 
he's left. He's grown up. He's out the door because you're so proud and you're <laughs> so freaking in pain and grieving at the same time. <laughs> mm -hmm. And how now you don't feel useful anymore. How am I useful? So how can you do that and still feel fulfilled? And so does that look like one-on-one -on -one coaching for them? Yes, I do do quite a bit of one-on-one -on -one coaching. So that's a powerful piece. But um, I also love working and setting up retreats and putting together, I say group, but it's almost, it's not really a group program so much, but as a, uh, a small group for coaching that way. So it's, it, but I do do the one-on-one -on -one as well. Yes. Okay. And so working with your husband, I mean, that's a lot of people hear that and maybe just cringe because they can't imagine the idea of, mm -hmm. you know, living with someone and working with someone and just always kind of being, you know, connected and with them. So what does that balance look like for you two? It's pretty interesting. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, because we've worked together since 2004. So when mm -hmm. we, we bought, like I said, we bought the bowling center, which was his world, not mine at that time. Right. <laughs> so, and I had had my studio, I was used to being the big cheese and mm -hmm. all of a sudden I had to be a business partner, which was a whole different ball game. And a new, we had only been married a year. <laughs> we did right. that. So it was a little crazy. And then a blended family. We must've been crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, so we really had to learn to appreciate again the differences but to not jump on each other so if i'm an expert at this if i'm really freaking good at whatever this is and in the in the scenario of the bowling center for example i handled all the business all the back end all the office piece and i worked out front and i could fix machines and all that stuff too but my genius was running the business of it and my husband's genius was running all the leagues and working with all the bowlers and all of that. That was his thing. Um, so we had to recognize those pieces in each other, our strengths and our weaknesses. And now as we work together, we still do that with the authors because I'm the more organized one. I want it. This is what we have to have. And we have to put this together and da, 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 da. And God love my husband. He totally flies by the seat of his pants, <laughs> which balances me out. It's great because <laughs> I can do that, but I prefer to have a plan. Um, mm -hmm. So we do those pieces really well. And he's, like I said, he's very outside of the box. He'll come up with some really crazy ideas. And if it's too crazy, then... I either rein it in or I'm at least asking, wait a minute, well, how the hell are we supposed to do that? And then we start to work together to figure out how we do that. I think the biggest thing is to, when your partner says something and you look at him or her and you go, oh my God, you're freaking crazy. <laughs> you still have to go, okay, I think you're insane. Can we do that? And that mentality really does come from a couple that we interviewed because we actually wrote a book called Richer Together, The Secrets to Living, Loving, and Working Together. And we interviewed, I think it was 22 other entrepreneurial couples, everybody from your small mom and pop up to couples that run multi-million dollar companies. So it was very interesting. And that was a big piece of it. It's like, just if you think they're crazy, it's okay. Just be willing to hear them out. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing for us is every single week, we have a business meeting every week. We absolutely do. Beyond that, now traveling, it's made it a little different. When we were in Colorado, we had separate offices. <laughs> we don't have a big house now. So <laughs> that we're adjusting to. Um, so we have to have find our space. Like right now, I'm hiding in another room in the townhouse, right, <laughs> to do an interview while the family, our son and my husband are elsewhere. So, but we definitely need time alone. And he goes to the beach every, I think it's every Sunday morning. He typically, that's his time. And I know it's only mm -hmm. once a week, but that's his thing. He goes over to the beach, sunrise every Sunday morning. So we have to find time away from each other as well as being able to have time together. And you have to find that space of, well, when you're talking about a couple, you've also got to find your romantic time. Mm -hmm. I think it's really super important to have and maintain a great sex life. My husband, I call him Mr. Frisky, but <laughs> that's just been a running joke for a long, long time. So he has a much higher sex drive than I do, but you still, you've got to find the balance in that. 
and make it work for the two of you. It just works with all of it, whether it's business or whether it goes that, you know, it's that mm -hmm. either side of the relationship, you know, or parenting. It's all important. We have to respect each other's opinions. Right. And you have to be able to make those shifts to know when it's time to talk business and when it's time to be romantic and when it's time to be a parent and when it's time, you know, to be yourself and to reflect within. So, yeah, you do have to kind of be able to handle all those those mental shifts. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't yeah. you agree that when you're traveling, stuff's going to come up different. Oh, stuff, absolutely. Right. Different things yeah. than. Yeah. Then we might normally have. So you've got to be able to kind of roll with the punches without freaking out. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Yes. Being flexible and as easygoing as you can stand to be is yeah. certainly important when you're traveling. <laughs> okay. And so having the many different businesses that you've had, and, and especially now in an online location independent business realm, what are some tips or some things to avoid that you could probably provide somebody who is considering going this route so that they can have a, a you know, a more liberating lifestyle? Well, there's so many. Oh, my God. <laughs> How do you pick just one? For one thing, one thing that I see time and time and time, I've been there, done it myself. When you think you can help everybody. So like, wait, I'm going to do this because especially in the coaching world, no, I can help everyone with this problem. And you can't, you've got to narrow it down specifically. What are you trying to do and help? Because then those people will go, oh my God, they're talking to me. She's talking to me and they're going to mm -hmm. buy from you. They're going to trust in you. They're going to listen. Then you can build a business from that. But even with one of the cool pieces that we have used in regards to we needed to build a team to do our, our contest critiques and to help us figure out who would win the contest for the book award contest, right? And and we actually have, we offer professional editing and critiquing and so forth through Authors Talk About It. So I actually went to Upwork.com and I actually found three phenomenal team members and they're overjoyed because sometimes with Upwork, they some people don't want to pay very much, but there are mm -hmm. those of us that are like, hey, wait, if you get in and you come on board, you've got this chance to grow with this cool company. So we've been able to offer some young moms amazing opportunity. And that I, I can't, again, I go back to the empowering women. So I get all it up over that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's, there's those types of things and there's different places out there. And that you can write, uh, if you're a writer, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. if you can write well enough, that you can do those. There's tons and tons of places online. If you want to do work for someone else, you can do that. It just takes, it's just like finding a job. It still takes time and effort. You have to put that time and effort into it to find what fits you. And you may have to do more than one thing to bring the money in. So, um, just because you're going to work online doesn't mean that you don't need to know how to run a business because you do. You still need to understand what it's like to be an entrepreneur. So it doesn't matter if it's a brick and mortar building or whether it's online. There's a lot of things that still line up and there's just different pieces that you must understand and have a, I'm very big on having a plan, but yet, yes, having the flexibility, <laughs> you got to be able to adjusted. <laughs> it evolves mm -hmm. for one thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Absolutely. It's constantly changing. Yeah. You can start off with a plan and it's going to end up somewhere completely different, exactly. but usually if you're doing it the right way, it's going to end up somewhere even better. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So two final questions here for part two. If you could go back and build your online business all over again, is there anything that you would do differently or faster or not do? First of all, I actually, I started my very first online, my first website was in, I don't know the year, um, but if Anthony was even born, he would have been very small. <laughs> so we're talking when the internet was just almost first, almost first available to the general public. So we're talking, I'm saying mid nineties anyway, I would have never let it go away because I would have had such a foothold. <laughs> Right. But here's the deal. We can't go back to then. So mm -hmm. when you see something that is new and fascinating and you think, wow, this could work for me, don't give up. 
you know, find the support. I didn't have the support then, and I didn't know where to look for it. So there is a lot of us, Brittany, myself, right? We're out here to support people to be able to have the freedom, whether they want to travel all the time or just at least have the freedom and ability to travel part of the time, whatever. But we definitely need mentors. We need that kind of support and say, wow, you're doing it. Thank God someone that understands me (laughs) because our family may think we're crazy and maybe not our immediate family, but our extended family. So Mm -hmm. that to me is probably the biggest thing. Find somebody that you feel comfortable with, that you are like, yeah, I can trust them. And they certainly seem to know what they're doing that you can listen to and learn from. I just think that's the biggest thing you could do for yourself. Okay. And so that might actually be your answer to the final question, which you mentioned a book in part one that I think is going to apply to this question as well. So if you want to talk about it again, for the person who is in their work routine, they're in their life routine, they're stuck, they live every day over and over again, and they know there's something missing and they know that having a business that will allow more freedom, a business of their own, or even just a location independent career will allow more freedom. They just don't know how to go about figuring all of this online <laughs> business space out. Because as you realized when you started, it there it's so overwhelming. Mm-hmm. There's so much to have to learn and it's so different from anything else. What do you recommend to help just kind of get them started on that journey? Well, if we talk, you know, as far as my book goes that I just released, which is Soul Gap, uh, re- rediscover the colors of your soul and fulfill your life's mission. <clears throat> First of all, soul gap is your life's mission minus your active participation. So it's what you're supposed to be doing. And instead <laughs> you're not, you think you're supposed to go to work every day <laughs> and that's what you're expected to do, or you have your own expectations of. So you're not actively participating in what you're so being called to do. So, yes, I absolutely think there's a, there's wonderful exercises within Soul Gap, and it really helps you figure out what it is that you're missing, take a, real, or take a really good look at your life, and how you can bridge that gap, and then how you can maintain it and create a plan to move forward. As far as the online space, first of all, highly, highly <laughs> caution everyone of becoming overwhelmed with the information overload because Mm -hmm. yeah, there's, I mean, you could, this person will tell you to do it uh, this way. And this one says, no, 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 this way. And this one goes, oh no, you got to do this way. And then this one said, and you could pull your hair out. (laughs) So again, yeah, and and, absolutely. I know. I'm sure you've seen it, (laughs) but it has to be what calls to you because if you don't enjoy it, then you're just going to get trapped back in crap all over again. And there are so many coaches that I hear about that are like, oh my God, I just want to coach. This will be amazing. Oh. But then if you completely book your calendar up with coaches and you're not charging very much, guess what? Mm-hmm. You have re-trapped yourself in perhaps not even a nine to five, it might even be worse than that. It could be hours and hours. You're back to that 60, 70, eight hours a week. So you've got to be careful and figure out what it is that will make you super happy, make your soul sing, but that gives you the time with your family, the time to travel. That's what you've got to do. But if you don't have your messaging right, I think this comes to the key. If you don't have your messaging right, what it is you do, who you're really trying to help, specifically who you're trying to make a difference for and what their problem is, you're going to get crickets. (laughs) And that wraps up my interview with Janelle Alex. I hope that you were able to appreciate and learn from her unique perspective of not only having a location-independent business, but also having multiple brick-and-mortar businesses. A lot of times we think of those as two separate things, but really, it's still being an entrepreneur. It's still running a business. It's still trying to make money. I will have links to everything that Janelle mentioned in today's episode in the show notes on my website. 
You can find those at livinguncomm forward slash episode 128. And of course, those are the actual numbers, 128. Don't forget to join the 450 plus members of the Living Unconventionally Facebook community. We are constantly sharing pictures, stories, making friendships and connections, and potential travel buddies, and we would love to have you join us. All you have to do is click the link that will be in the show notes for this episode, or just simply go to livinguncomm forward slash Facebook. That's going to wrap it up for today, and I cannot wait to see you back here on Friday for this week's solo episode. <laughs>